and welcome to this coffee conversation. Um, today, uh, the topic will be this um, photograph uh, by the Irish artist uh, Willie Doherty. My name is Jessica Fahey and I'm going to speak on this work today from uh, various different angles and interpretations as well as giving you uh, some more information about the artist. So uh, to start with the details, as you can see here, uh, this is um, a photograph uh, which is actually a particular type of uh, photography whereby the um, image is printed onto a polyester base rather than what would be typical which would be a paper base um, and this allows it actually to retain its colour and um, quality for a much longer period of time. Um, it's also worth noting the size of this work. It's um, 122 uh, centimetres by 183 centimeters so when you see it in the gallery space it is um, uh, really quite large for a photograph and therefore has an effect on you as the viewer you become much more um, sort of uh, possibly overwhelmed by it rather than you having to go in and seek it and look at it closer and um, but we'll come back to those things and how that might affect uh, our reading of the work in a moment um, so it is uh, from 1995 and was purchased uh, by the Curling Gallery in Dublin uh, in 1996. And this is during um, a period of great productivity for the artist where in fact he made a series of works around um, the same time as uh, this particular um, image that we're looking at now. We're going to focus just on this image today but I am going to talk about uh, as I say his career and some of the other works a little bit later. I'm also going to come back to the title a little bit later because first I want to uh, view this work um, as if we had no further information about it, uh, as if we are just confronted with it in uh, a gallery space and we have no idea uh, of the title or anything further about what we might, um, you know, try and find out from the, you know, the little card beside the uh, artwork to try and figure it out. So instead, I think one of the things that is, uh, always for me a very entertaining pursuit is to just look at something and see what comes to me as I look at it and I think actually you know quite a lot of artists particularly if they present something like this that is relatively uh, ambiguous and isn't you know very straightforward representation of a thing and um, that it is up to us a lot of the time to uh, find our own meaning or have at least our own responses to it and then we can you know read more and fill in more gaps and uh, understand it in other ways so to start first with just you know um perception at looking at this work what we see is headlights of a car in a distance we can just about make out um, that there is a, a registration plate and then in the foreground we have a road that clearly has uh, uh, markings on the tarmac as if cars have been turned around here or are driving here kind of in an erratic form and um, and other than that, we get nothing but darkness. So we can presume it's nighttime and we can presume that uh, where we are, we are also shining a light onto the uh, ground because the headlights in the distance don't seem to be lighting all the way in front of them either. So even in, uh, from this, you know, initial kind of description of the um, photograph we start to already feel that things are a little bit off a little bit odd and and it's starting to get difficult to even place ourselves within the context of the image and um, so if we try to place ourselves one of the things and one of the ways that you know that occurs to me is to think about how it makes us feel and certainly the nighttime scene um leads to fe feelings perhaps of a sort of anxiety or a, a fear there's a, a sense here of being watched but not necessarily knowing who's watching you and even though we recognize these headlights as headlights and um, there's also a kind of beastly kind of uh, sense to it you know sort of um you know some creature of the night so we start to realize that uh, our imagination is allowed to kind of run wild uh, when looking at this image because of those kind of amb ambiguous elements. So um, 
if we even just take that as a, an approach and we start to then, you know, um, question perhaps why we feel so unsettled. And again, I think it's that idea of that feeling of being watched without knowing who's watching you. But then you're also aware all of a sudden that you're also doing the watching to a certain extent too. And then it starts to almost feel like some sort of uh, standoff. Um, when we bring in the title again to this work, uh, we can start to uh, think further along these lines. So it is entitled At the Border to Low Visibility. So now we start to think about the idea of borders and the uh, sort of idea of being on one side or the other of a border and perhaps wanting to escape to the other side um, or perhaps wanting to stop someone coming in. And although this work is from the 1990s, of course, the concept of borders and control of borders um, is a, a current uh, political, um, uh, important political conversation that's happening in various places around the world. So the notion of border and the notion of creating that, that essentially, you know, an arbitrary line that uh, then starts to have meaning as to what side of it you're on and your permission to cross or not to cross or who gets to rule it or who gets to govern it. So that starts to come into play with our reading and interpretation of the work. On top of that, we also then get to start to think about, well, um, if this is a border, are, are we the one trying to cross or are we the one trying to stop someone crossing? And we just don't know. So there isn't any more information given to us in this. So it allows us then as a viewer to play both roles in relation to that idea. This, of course, then is further um, expanded upon uh, when we start to look at the artist and ask questions about him and his making of this work and if there is any particular uh, local or individual meaning for him and uh, that might relate to our sort of universal ideas of um, borders and again our universal ideas of you know, being in the dark and being watched and all of these things. Um, and of course, the specifics come into play um, in a way that does relate directly uh, uh, to the artist. But as I say, still leaves things open for a more universal view as well. And essentially what we know about uh, uh, Willie uh, Doherty is that he's from Derry, uh, grew up in Derry and um, studied in Belfast, studied to be a sculptor, in fact, but um, found that a lot of the works that he was creating were sort of ephemeral. So really what he was left with at the end of the day was more film and photography uh, rather than physical sculpted uh, pieces. So this then became more of his uh, interest. And unlike a lot of uh, artists of his generation, he didn't in fact um, uh, emigrate. He didn't leave uh, Northern Ireland. Instead, he stayed there. And, you know, he's working there in the you know, 1980s and 1990s, where uh, the city of Derry is uh, in the centre of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, or one of the centres of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, and therefore a very um, a difficult place to be for a variety of reasons. But as we know, you know, um, war-torn spaces are, are rarely places all that conducive to, to actually the physical creation of art. They might, you know, very often be the inspiration for it, but it can be difficult to uh, work and live in uh, that sort of environment. So it's really uh, quite interesting to think of him staying there and uh, being part of it. Um, in terms of uh, the kind of work that he created um, when he is sort of turning to photography and to film, uh, some of the earlier pieces, they're still ambiguous, but he tended to include text and would have maybe a photograph with certain words uh, written across it. And usually something that again is to make you think of both sides. Um, and he in fact mentions the idea that, you know, the other side in Northern Ireland uh, has a very specific meaning. So it means the those on the other side of the uh, debate, whether you know they're um, uh, Republicans or um, Unionists, or whether they're Catholic or Protestant, or whichever way uh, they're talking about th that divide, that the other side um, has a further meaning. And he, some of his other works um, 
photograph either side of uh, a bridge in Derry as well, with that same kind of idea in mind. Um, and then he starts to, you know, um, make more uh, films, short films, um, with kind of uh, very, um, uh, very kind of uh, um, difficult and kind of mournful and um, tragic feeling kind of narrated stories. Everything's very... Um, sad and kind of low um in fact he still makes short films and there was one that he released only this year in fact i think quite um soon after kind of the first lockdown in uh, march and um, and i think that one was called endless and it was again a, a, a um a, a, in that case kind of a little bit more about you know memory and uh, the difficulties of memory and these kind of things. Anyway, I won't go into explaining too many of the other ones that you're not looking at, but just to point out that there's plenty more of his work to be seen that you can uh, uh, seek out, um, both in the Hulane collection and uh, elsewhere. In fact, he's really quite a successful artist on an international front too, uh, with works by him um, being acquired by the Tate um, in uh, the UK, as well as places like MoMA, um, Museum of Modern Art in New York, um, IMA, the Irish Museum of Modern Art. And he in fact twice was uh, shortlisted for the um, uh, Turner Prize, as well as representing uh, Ireland at the Venice Biennale. Uh, internationally, he's also represented um, so he's represented the Republic of Ireland, but he's also represented Britain and he's also represented Northern Ireland. So he's a really interesting artist, you know, from that perspective of, you know, tying together all those things that we may not always so easily bring together um, in terms of background and uh, our expectations of what that might mean. So we have um, this artist who then is situated uh, in the Troubles, creating works um, uh, while there. And this work, in fact, from 1995 would mean that it was uh, created during the time of the ceasefire before the Good Friday Agreement of 1998. So actually a time of uncertainty. And uh, his works tend to, you know, sort of anyway kind of represent uh, levels of uncertainty, even as I've already mentioned with the sort of interpretation of this work here. But it's particularly noteworthy that he doesn't use or doesn't tend to use any of the more obvious um, symbols or types of images that we might expect from an artist representing the Troubles in Northern Ireland. So it's not, uh, you know, um, marches or, um, uh, you, you know, kind of... Uh, uh, like Republic of Ireland flags versus Union Jacks or any of those, you know, um, types of image that we might expect painted on the wall uh, in, in Northern Ireland. Instead, it's much more quiet, much more still, and as I say, much more uh, ambiguous uh, as we see here. So if we think then of the border in Northern Ireland and um, who we may be as the viewer or who we may be looking at here as the viewer, there's no indication one way or the other as to whether we're the people who've just been caught or we're the ones about to do the catching or, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, even if you were sort of the border control, all of a sudden these lights may be something completely innocent or they may be something threatening uh, and vice versa for um, people just trying to innocently cross the border. So we start to get all of these different stories emerge, different ways that we can take the narrative of this image. Um, and this is why I think it is such a, a wonderful work and why it's so powerful because it allows us to sit into all these different positions rather than it being a work too obvious, you know, on one side or the other or too obvious or heavy handed in presenting uh, an idea. Um, so again, to kind of think about uh, that notion of, you know, where we stand um, in relation to the, or the actions or, or what's going on uh, within this work. And, that is how, in a way, we sort of give uh, um, further meaning or we start to make these imagined meanings. And this is one of the things that Willie, Do Willie Doherty sorry, said of his works, um, that he turned to photography as a way of kind of capturing something and capturing something in the real world. Um, 
and that it works, of course, very well for that. But he started to realize more and more that although you are capturing something real, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're only representing one idea or one truth. And he talked about this more in relation to kind of landscape and, and that idea that a landscape can have multiple meanings, even if it's just the same one photograph of the same one spot, it may start to mean different things to different people. Um, and this is the thing about, you know, presenting us with something that's so real, but at the same time leaves us all this space for further uh, exploration and um, imagination. So he talks uh, himself a lot about the ideas of complexities around looking and seeing uh, and also seeing oneself when you then start to do this looking and this seeing. And that a lot of his works have this um, uh, dual or multiple readings possible. So, uh, uh, you know, and he it was actually talking about works other than this one when he sort of mentioned the idea of um, uh, the feeling of a kind of vulnerability of being seen without being able to see, um, which I think is very much at the centre and uh, the core of uh, this work. And again, uh, one of the reasons why it becomes uh, so fascinating. So if we... Um, imagine uh, one of the other issues that might be at play here, um, again thinking about the time of uh, troubles in Northern Ireland and in Derry and the idea of uh, a sort of world filled with surveillance and there was um, essentially sustained surveillance uh, in Northern Ireland uh, often of the nationalist families by uh, the police in Northern Ireland. And it was that sort of feeling like you were always uh, being watched. Um, and, but you could also argue the other side of that, if you have guerrilla warfare, um, you also have that fear uh, and feeling of always being watched. But I suppose it was more widespread and uh, more pervasive perhaps um, uh, on the side of the police, you know, looking at uh, civilians. And, and although, again, this is a local issue and, you know, it talks to a local story about the Troubles in Northern Ireland, it is also worth noting that this, of course, is something that we are, um, are getting more and more uh, aware of and um, engaging in or perhaps uh, uh, being happy to ignore uh, in modern life. You know, the idea of uh, surveillance, not just in terms of sort of CCTV and that kind of thing, but perhaps more because so much of our lives now are being lived online of, uh, you know, how much of um, uh, an awareness uh, and, uh, uh, that we have of, of what's being collected or um, how happy we are for that to happen, uh, collected in terms of what we do, what we read, what we watch, all of these things. So there's this, you know, again, um, a, a further meaning to be gathered from something from the 1990s that still uh, is relevant today. And again, something that's specific to Northern Ireland that's relevant more broadly uh, today. Um, so with this kind of work then, that idea of, you know, uh, tuning into the artist, his life and the meaning of the work perhaps for him or the local ideas for him. The other thing that it does, or at least it strikes me as doing, is that it then highlights our position, uh, not just our position in terms of this narrative within the artwork, but our position um, perhaps in terms of the political situation um, uh, in, in Northern Ireland. So where we stand, where we feel more comfortable standing. Do we feel more comfortable as the border guards or do we feel uh, more comfortable as those trying to pass through them? Um, you know, where do we situate ourselves in this uh, real world uh, political um, uh, story essentially. So I think that's um, a very valuable part of his uh, work too. So Within some of his other works, again, as I mentioned, it does have this kind of feeling of um, a, a kind of uncomfortableness. And that can be from placing us within a context that we maybe don't want to think about or we don't know the answer to or we don't feel um, at all sure of where our position is. Or if we do, it's something that upsets us or whatever reason it may be. Um, but there's also a, a kind of um, uncomfortableness or kind of um, 
ominous sort of feeling to a lot of these works uh, that seems to come from something, you know, almost more uh, instinctual. And as I was mentioning, that kind of night um, feeling of the kind of beast in the background here, I think uh, does that very well. Um, other critics have commented on it being kind of like a film noir quality, the way that he uses um, the kind of atmospheric effect in the way that he uses light and dark uh, within these images. And further to that, if uh, if you remember, I mentioned at the beginning the size of this work. So it has more of that kind of, you know, film screen feeling to it because it is quite large. Also, the cinematic quality um, makes you feel as if you're seeing this as a freeze frame moment, just about, uh, just as something else is about to happen. And um, so while there is this kind of tension with the stillness as to you know, the not knowing what's happening, you know, in this moment and we're kind of stuck in this moment. Some of the things like the um, car tracks on the road, the suggestion of, you know, cars speeding off or turning around gives us some sort of indication that there, there may be a conflict. So we're sort of brought into, again, uh, a further narrative and uh, a further story and um, making this you know, artwork, one of those that's just so intriguing and so interesting from the perspective of these multiple meanings, both local and universal, um, and the ability for a single image to give us so many questions and to make us ask them of the work, but also of ourselves, um, and also to affect our uh, emotions and how you know, comfortable or uncomfortable we are as we look at it. So hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this um, short talk today on this work and uh, will perhaps be interested in looking at more of uh, Willie uh, Doherty's works. Um, and as I mentioned, they're in uh, uh, collections uh, all around the world. And um, uh, hopefully you'll also be back uh, and join us again for more of our online content uh, at the moment um, uh, on the um, uh, Hugh Lane uh, website and elsewhere. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, talk to you again soon.